Amen. Amen. We are putting our hands together. Amen. God bless you. RIT, Sister Stacy Can. Um, and before I go any further, before I say another word, let's pray. Father, we thank you. God in heaven, we are yet in your presence. We feel your love. We feel your presence, your spirit, um, just the peace of who you are, the love of who you are. You are love. We thank you, Lord, for your servant and how she has delivered this message, how we have received, and I believe we will grow from it. Father, I pray that you will continue to be with RIT, Sister Stacy, her heart to serve, her care for her family, her giving to the kingdom. Continue to bless her and her husband, the children, the grandchildren, that they will continue to shine forth as beacons for Christ, as the love of God dictates that we ought to. Thank you again, God, for this word and indeed for the love wherewith you loved us. We are thankful, and we pray this in no other name than the proof of love, the sacrificial lamb himself, that name Jesus, and everyone says, amen, amen. I, I want to say this before I forget it, and, and again, thank you, RIT. Listen, let me tell you something that happened. Once she started on point two and she was going, I'm so in love with point two. It's like I forgot all of point one. <laughs> it took me somewhere. I'm like happy. I'm in love. Why well, I got to go back to point one? I said something, you know, if people would get to point two, they would never go, my Lord, my God. They would never go back to point one. A searching. Eros, Philos. No, no, no. Once you reach Agape, why are you going back? What, what, what? And you know, the critical thinker in me says this because I know it's the truth. If you reach Agape and you go back, you didn't reach Agape. You didn't. You knew about it. You could really work it a bit and really be convincing because we know Christianese and churchese. We got that. Because once you reach that standard, of not just what God does, but who he is. Listen, you know, I, can't go, I, I cannot go back and crucify Christ afresh. I will not make decisions with my consciousness that I know God is not pleased with. I speak in tongues, sing, give spiritual messages. I don't care. If you deny the cross work, deny the love of God, you're not there yet. So it's challenging because we, we must be there. We are commanded to be there. Anyway, before I give all the nuggets that Alda Seaman, I see you there, Alda Rogers. <laughs> I know your internet was giving you a little bit of issue. I think I'm going to just deal with Alda Seaman. Oh, you right. You got some nuggets for me? Yeah, let, let me come on real quick, Pastor, in case I lose connection. <laughs> Go God for it, Alda. You. God bless you. My sister Stacy can. What a word. I was writing so fast. I have to do shorthand. But let me tell you, I lost connection on your second part when we got to the part eternal. But let's go back to worldly love. I did jump down a few nuggets. Now, worldly love. Um, When you love the world's way, God, hallelujah, you get end up with heartache and pain. Been there, done that, my sister. Hallelujah. We are driven by our five senses and we need to be led by the Holy Spirit. You love people with that agape love without expecting anything in return. Then you spoke about selfish, worldly. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love as Christ's love. Love is not love. Love is not love. And then we spoke about, oh, my dear God, please look at my notes. Haughty eyes, pride is the original sin. Yes, human love and somewhere. Indifferent, opposite regard for the relationship. Give all your worries and cares to God. 
Then you spoke harmful, ungodly desire to control and manipulate. And then envy, jealousy, resentful. Thou shalt not cover thy name. Hallelujah. Then we went on to boasting and arrogance, another form of pride. And I like that little nugget you gave. Stop, pray, and go the other way. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. Worldly love is demanding, and you, de you demand from others. Manipulate and control. Godly love rejoices. And then on your second point, godly love. Selfless, less of self. Consider the other person. And then you spoke about John 3.16. God served us by giving his son to us so that we can have eternal life. There's no greater love than God's love. The Holy Spirit gives us the fruits of the Spirit. We're going to look at love unconditionally, compassion, grace, kindness, mercy, forgiveness, and love. While we were still sinners, he died for us. Love is patient and kind. When you are waiting, we have to have our hearts, good attitude while we're waiting. And we're growing in patience and kindness. is growing in us. And here's my faith, forgiving. Forgiving. Covers a multitude of sins. God removes our transgressions. Forgiven is very important. God loves us in spite of our sins. Be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving to one another as God forgave us. Amen. Oh, this is one too. Unforgiveness blocks your blessing. I'm going to say it again. Unforgiveness blocks your blessing. And then the internet went down, my sister. I got to eternal Love never fails. Faithful love of the Lord never ends. I apologize that my internet went down, my sister, because I was on a roll. I loved the godly love. I loved it. So my apologies again. A good message, Sister Stacy, And I'm so godly proud of you. Look what the Lord has done with us. With us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Well, we're all witnesses, you know, of what God's love does. What a transformation. Isn't it wonderful? And I tell you, well, I tell you, you wrote a book with what you got. Thank you, Alda. Well done. Well done. And now we're going to try something here, Alda Seaman. I will mute and you go right ahead. True love can only be forefront when one knows our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Many are looking in the wrong places for love. Worldly love is self-centered. It is all about me, me, not he. Our Lord looks right through our fronts and sees the real person. He knows us. God loves to make our life complete. If you allow him, he will. Men say they love us until things don't go their way. Then you see the true person come out. Godly love never ended. Forever. As a Christian opens their mouth prayerfully, the love of God comes out. Let us be centered on God's love. Love one another with his love. Unforgiveness can block one's receiving the true love from our Lord. All right. You wonderful. Oh, it must be just happening here. Maybe it's the love echo in our heartbeat or something. I don't know what's going on. We hear an echo. They don't hear it. Well, we must all confess. We knew all those love songs, didn't we, Out of Seaman? All of them. Back in, the, back in the early 80s, it is what it is. All of them. Here we are 40-plus years later. Still islands in the stream. Sometimes it's two different streams. Sometimes it's the same. Nevertheless, right now we're live streaming. How about that? Thank you, Elder Seaman, for your comments. Well received. God bless you. 
And at this time, let me go into the chat because some folks made comments and I want to share them with you. So let me scoot up to the top. We'll begin with Deaconess Rhonda Rollins. She says, wonderful, warm opening, D.I.T. Stacy." And I do remember Iraja as a small child. Sorry for the spelling of her name. Amen. Connections, relationship. Amen. And, and yes, very warm. And I like that you said that you were just relaxed. All right. Deaconess Rollins also said, let's not be selfish in our love. We need to give love without expectations. Isn't that wonderful? We don't put a, you know what that showed me, um, Deaconess Rollins? We don't put a price tag on it. Uh, you love me, boom. so I did this for you. No, 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 no. As the speaker said, we're, we're serving. We're doing what we have to do. And we know God, because God is love, he knows how we're serving. Let him take care of the rest. Don't, don't expect certain things back. Do it like Jesus did it. Hee. It's choice. All right, thank you, Deaconess. Bring on a Reverend Jennifer. Mm-hmm. Yep, when we were talking about this current season that we're living in, selfies and pride. All right, tell you. Always got the camera ready for a selfie. Can they use that same excitement to lift up Jesus? That's where you're going to know. It's the selfie about being selfish. You see. Thank you there, Reverend. I'm sure you have something else to say in a little while. R.I.T. Sister Laquita. I don't know. Oh, yeah, here she is. Here she is. Amen. And she says, Agape love sees the soul and not the flesh. Oh, boy. We are beckoned to rise, to host an agape love. Oh, wow. We are in the soul-saving business. Yes. Because if it's about the flesh, R.I.T. Sister Laquita, if it's about the flesh, we could get hindered. We would stop. We would allow ourselves to hinder the move of God. And I'm telling you, as a shepherd, I, I, I live in this. People try to press your buttons, try to do things, don't do some things. Listen. Every day. And what I have to do, what we all have to do, is say it's not about you. It's not about my flesh, my sensation. No, no, no. Let me show God's agape love. Because can you imagine if God gave his son based on who we are. Well, well, it wouldn't be for, so, for God so loved the world. <laughs> it would be for God so loved a certain amount of people. So yeah, we've definitely, I'm telling you, we've definitely got to work in and do all that we do, keeping that in mind. So saving business, God bless you. Then we've got her daughter, bring her daughter on, D.I.T. Lachey. I love the way she supports you. Made me feel like, where's my Jenna? Where's somebody? Support me this way. Beautiful. It's beautiful. She says, when we seek love in the world, it mostly leads to heartbreak and disappointment. But God's love could never break our heart, but instead heals our heart from brokenness. Wow. Put your name and date there. That is a statement for history. Yeah. God doesn't break our heart. He mends our heart. And he heals it from brokenness, not only current brokenness, but brokenness to come. And when you learn that God is a healer, you trust that when you're going through situations that, are, that will break you, that God's going to fix you. That's a beautiful statement there. God bless you, D-I-T. Bring back on our deaconess, Rhonda Rollins. Amen. And she says, we can strive but can never be on the same level as God. Don't be full of pride. It's the original sin. Love it. Love it. Stop, pray, and go the other way. This will be on my board tomorrow morning. Amen. Let me know how the children receive it. <laughs> I tell you, praise God and bless you as you continue to show forth doing what you have been called to do for such a time as this while we still have time. God bless you, 
there, Deaconess. Bring back on RIT, Sister Laquita. Come on, somebody. That's right. That's why we don't move from it. Love. His name is Jesus. Love is Jesus. Don't offer me anything else. Don't tell me to give me a mixed drink. Now, listen, let me take a sip. Hold on. Gotta do it. Now, this is coming from a girl that's never drank any type of alcohol or wine. But I'm watch TV. So I'm gonna say this. Give it to me straight. Don't put it on the rocks. Just give me the rock Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody. <laughs> don't give me, don't give me no mixed drinks. No, sir. No, sir. Just Jesus. Hey, see that right there? Just Jesus. Give me the proof of God's love. Hallelujah. That's why people mess with me. They try to get me into these prayers with all these other religions and gods. What? I'm straight, straight, straight. Only Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, RIT. God bless you. Bring, I knew she was coming back. Bring on Reverend Jennifer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. This is why I love him so. This is why I love me some Jesus. Right here, Reverend said, we were under eternal condemnation. But Jesus took the punishment for us. Hallelujah. We have a reason to worship, praise God, and serve the kingdom. He took it for us. No other God did that. They still want you to work to do something. Nope. Jesus did it. We will, by faith, operate accordingly. All right. Thank you, Reverend. Deaconess Nancy Tobin Hooks, come on. Come on in to the highlight. Highlight. Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead, Deaconess. Why don't you unmute and sing that song? I see it. I see it. Go ahead. Go ahead. See, the pastor was fading. I had confidence. Jesus went to Calvary. To save a wretch like you and me, that's love. That's love. That's not how the story ends, right? Right, we got it, we got it. Jesus, oh, I'm sorry. Jesus is love. Got the heart there. I'm telling you, when you are in love, you're going to be all right, no matter what you're going through, because he went to Calvary. Thank you, Deaconess. Bring back on Deaconess in Training, D-I-T, Lachey. Here comes daughter. She is saying, hallelujah. God the Father sent his son, Jesus Christ, as our last sacrificial offering needed for the remission of our sins. Father and son are the same, which means God our Father gave himself on Calvary as well. Oh, yes. The three is one. <laughs> I didn't say R. I said is. I knew what I was saying. The three is one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Blessed Holy Spirit. Ooh, I'm trying not to go towards Good Friday. I'm feeling something right there. Beautiful. That's right. They are. And that's why you don't tell me, oh, I believe in God. I believe in the higher power. I believe in all the man upstairs. But you don't believe in Jesus? We don't believe in the same whatever you're talking about. See that? Oh. People don't fuss with me about things, I guess. I guess, you know. Anyway, thank you, D.I.T. Bring back on Jan. I know I, I, this is her favorite. Her favorite thing to mention. Favorite. Did I say favorite? Reverend Jennifer's favorite thing. Anything that hits in that area, she's going to punctuate it. Genesis 3. When they foul. When it all fell out of whack. But guess what? Before the foundation of the world, God already knew what was going to happen. So he had the plan. He just knew we were going to mess up. But listen, that was thousands of years ago. There was a lot to unfold. Right now where we are, we don't take chances. We don't say, oh, he ain't come yet, so we can still dabble and, and all this type of whatever words, you know. No, because he can come at any moment. The return of Jesus Christ is imminent. The rapture is imminent. So we don't take chances. Oh, well, he ain't come since Adam and Eve. Right. And where are we today? Right. Okay. Just thought I would say that. Bring on Desai. Okay, Desai Hayward. 
If you're, are you on screen? If not, that's okay. I can't remember if I've seen you. Desai. Nope, no scream. So let me say this here. Listen to what Desai is saying. When you stand for Jesus Christ, many will fall away from you. Hey, come on. Sir. I almost got up. I almost got up. But he never will. <laughs> Woo. He never will. And guess what? It is he who we shall meet in the sky. It is he whom we will be joined to in eternal, perfected, wedded bliss. I think I'll choose Jesus. Hallelujah. I will choose Jesus. Thank you, Desai. And then our speaker from this afternoon, yeah, Reverend Esther Trutch, she says, thank God he loved me with the cross. Come on. The cross told the story. It still tells the story. If we forget the cross, we'll cross right back over to what we used to do. But when you understand the weight of the work, I ain't taking no chances. Are you kidding me? No, no, that's not an option. All right, thank you, uh, Reverend Trot. And bringing back your daughter, D.I.T. Lachey says, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, that's, those are grateful emerges right there. My Jesus went to Calvary, and he loved me with the cross. Yes, he did. That's why I wear this. I wear this all the time. I don't know how much it cost me wearing that much, but it's enough. It's enough to remind me because it cost him everything. Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. That, this cross. I'm uncomfortable if I'm not got it on. I didn't need it, but it's a constant reminder. The work, the work, the work. The work that he done, he ain't going to cross. So I got to crucify myself every day. Come on, you can't do what? Yes, you will. You will crucify your flesh. Yeah, you will slow it down. Make sure you, you, are, you are in alignment because Jesus, he got on the cross. So you get yourself together. That's the way I talk to me. Mm, once in a while, I got to talk to me that way. Yeah, I do. All right, thank you, DIT. Bring on our wonderful Deaconess Carolyn Dallas. And now she's congratulating you. Here you are. Beautiful message. R.I.T. Stacy was truly blessed today with, with three beautiful sermons. <laughs> ain't, ain't nobody should be slipping this week. Lord, if one, if one sermon didn't get you, I've got five sermons. I should be floating around here today. I should be floating. I'm sitting. Uh, okay, you'd like past this tired. Yeah, I haven't eaten yet. So we're going to do that off of this. All right, here we go. <laughs> you are right, Deaconess. God bless you. Beautiful sermons. May God bless and keep you always in his care. Amen. Thank you there, Deaconess Dallas, and God continue to bless you. Okay, Deaconess R Rhonda Rollins is coming on. Um, correcting, yeah. Uh, look at Ty. Bring Tyra on. She got a lot of nerve. Ty, bring, bring Deaconess Tyra on. <clears throat> bring, bring her on. She's laughing at me. She said, no chaser, ow, ow, ow. I used it right, though, didn't I? I used it right. Okay, there you go. There you go. I watch TV. I listen to some of you back, talk about back in your day. I, I, back in my day, I played hopscotch. <laughs> back in my day, I don't know, cowboys and Indians. I thought the Indians were real and the cowboys were real. I thought I was going to die every afternoon. Lord Hill, I did, I did. Anyway, yeah, but some of you, I ain't looked at anybody, I'm looking straight up. Some of you know about those chasers and on the rocks and mixed drinks and pretending wine coolers that they're all right. Not me. Not me. Anyway, yes, you laugh on. Yeah, you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Are you putting yourself in trouble? Thank you, Deaconess. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and then, oh, okay. This, okay. Reverend Eunice. Reverend Eunice. <laughs> Reverend Eunice is telling me who Desai is. I should then I need to say Mr. Hayward, Brother Hayward. That's your he is your husband. Amen. Oh no, D I T Lachey. Oh Lord, I'm marrying people. Ooh, no, no, no. We're not doing that same. No, we're not. Uh-uh. That is <laughs> D I T um, mm. uh, I'm got it, girl. I am a I know your mama loves him, but not like that. She got mm-mm. No, uh -uh, we are not getting into that. We are at agape. Not all this crazy stuff I got going on. 
one husband. <laughs> Whew, then he say that. That's our conversation right there. All right. So we got you. Let your husband know I greet him. Amen. Amen. And then superintendent, bring on yourself. That's I like when she brings on herself. Can you find you? There you are. <laughs> Hopscott was the closest. <laughs> I didn't read it beforehand. Hopscotch was the closest to scotch that Pat, y'all got that right. You have that right. I'm telling you, go, go up maybe just so weird, I guess, cause so that nobody could backlash me. Yo, man, that's right. That's a good one. That's a good one. As you can tell, sermon reached folks. Now, I, I am really, I've spoken a lot, enough. People, people are like, yes, you did, Pastor. Anyway, I still got one more thing I want to say. It was sad. Matter of fact, um, Elder Rogers said it at the last second, but I have a little something to add to it. I was like, good, nobody said nobody. Then she said it. And that's when you said, towards the end, really, um, unforgiveness blocks blessings. Unforgiveness blocks blessings. Here's the image. Jesus is on the cross. He died for us. Jesus is on the cross. He forgave. I'm going to start it again to make sure I don't miss anybody out. Jesus is on the cross. He forgives the whole world of their sins. If Jesus is the blesser, then we can't be blessed if we don't forgive because the blesser forgave. You, you got that church? You got that out there, you know, on social media? So if we hold unforgiveness in our heart, now it did not say you're not going to be mad for a minute. Hey, well, let me talk about me. I will be mad for a moment. I will be disappointed. Now, I will say this church year, I was stretched. I got vexed for maybe three days. But, you know, I got it together for Sunday. But typically, I'm a 24-hour person. Look, get over this thing because I've got things to do. Here's the key. How can I shepherd God's people if I'm holding unforgiveness? How can I speak blessings over the people? How can I preach God's beautiful word of salvation when I'm doing the antithesis, the opposite of what he did on the cross? You see how that goes? So we must forgive. We won't forget. I didn't say forgive and forget. My, my memory is great. I don't need to write down things. But you must forget the emotions, forget the ugliness that it brings to your life and release people and be nice and shine forth and show them agape. Woo! And maybe everything will be all right between you and whomever. Right? So that was my big thing. I was like, yeah. Unforgiveness blocks blessings. Can't be Jesus person and talk about you're not forgiven. Mm -mm. Other than that, I think we've been well covered. The sermon well received. God bless you. As I heard, I, now I heard her say, no, she's on this way, it might be. I heard her say, she's already got a sermon ready. Now you say something like that to me, or getting the sermon, but clean. I heard it clean. You say that to me, I'm like, oh, so man, I'm doing my preparation for um, like next year, in January. I know it's dear, um, Reverend in training, Stacy, she's already, <laughs> I'm, I'm all right with that. She ain't going to say, no, I need time, nothing like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. All right, T, good job. Well done. Put us on gallery. Let's put our hands together one more time for this woman of God. As she has presented, it would not be right if I did not give an opportunity for her pastor's wife, First Lady Reverend Eunice, to have some comments before we get ready to close out with the benediction. Reverend Eunice? Man, God bless you, Pastor. Our IT, well done. Pastor Randy will be very pleased, but most of all, God is pleased. So we truly say, to God be the glory. Um, one point that I did want to say, um, and I have to look because I don't have my glasses on. You said love is patient and kind and they go together like peanut butter and jelly. 
I love peanut butter and jelly, strawberry jam too. That fresh homemade stuff. Yes, but that, <laughs> but that is so vitally true. It's because when we are tested to the limit and sometimes we become impatient and you challenged us and you reminded us that in our patience, we need to show God's love through our kindness. We need to exercise that. That's something that we need to remember because that's easier said than done. <laughs> oh yes, it most certainly is. And you also said, God's love is forgiving. Allow God to smell the sweet aroma of our forgiveness. Praise the Lord. So that's what I just wanted to add at the end of what um, Pastor Simi said, added that sweet aroma as she was talking about forgiveness. So to God be the glory for that. Love you. God bless you. And well done. And oh, um, Reverend Dr. Maria A. Simi, that message is where she ministers that begins. <laughs> bless you. Well, I am confident that she can get another one ready for January 2024. Should yes, the Lord did. tarry. Yes, yes. yes. Cause because that was so well laid out. And I hope people got that. You know, all the explaining on well, see, now you're making me talk more. I was about to give the benediction. You know, but the comparison was absolutely amazing. And again, my emphasis is once I got to the goodness of God. I couldn't remember the badness of the other stuff. And that's just where we, <laughs> that's where we got to go. Worship God so much that what people do to us, what they call us, um, the challenges of life, it doesn't mean a thing. Let me worship Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, Reverend Eunice. We appreciate and love you dearly. Well, folks, we have come to the conclusion of this Zoom service. I know that you have been blessed. And, you know, if you don't have a church home, you need a home. You, matter of fact, when people don't have a home, you know, the police and people put the pictures on Facebook and put out an old points bulletin if you're seeing them. Well, if it's that way in the natural, how much more in the spiritual? If you don't have a church home, you're homeless. You're lost. Find yourself in a church so that you can give of your gift, of your talent, the wonderful things that God's placed in your life so that you can add it to our lives. We need you. Amen. Be encouraged. Well, at this time, we're going to close out with the benediction and our deaconess Gallus will lead us in. <laughs> Good evening, church. Let us repeat the benediction. We depart to a life of consistent prayer. We depart to meditate on and study the word of God. We depart to obey the word of God in our daily lives. We depart to share our testimonies and win souls. We depart to reign in life as kings and priests of the Lord Jesus Christ. We depart to conquer evil and show forth the love of God in a dying world. Jude 24, 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Deaconess Dallas. And one more time, again, we want to say that God's love, that's your goal. That's your aim. And it will fill you so that you search for none other. Well, before I go to the concluding video, we want to certainly end this by saying, well, you know what we're saying. Blessings abound.